In the last presentation, I showed you how to define a variable, what are different types of variable, how to write a for loop, how to display output in an interactive way, and then how to write output in a different worksheet, how to take user input through prompt using input box, how to use user input, and then how to use record macro feature to know VVS syntax, how to use breakpoint to go through the syntax and discover what it is doing and how to run macro through click of a button by in I mean you know how do you create a button like this you know and you click a button and it runs in this particular case I'm going to talk about in this particular presentation I'll talk about this so first I'm going to explain you scenario where you will need do while or do until kind of loop and then how will you create your do while or do until loop then at times you will require user input from the seat so that you know you can type in here and it should go and how you can ensure proper variable naming so that you do not struggle with that kind of error and how you can so, so program execution in the status bar here so let me go one by one what you need to understand let me just go to the VBA window by pressing alt f11 so you know in this case I had typed for i equal to 1 to counter and I am entering counter here you know like when I am doing it it's giving me a prompt okay let's now you know see that you know at times you will like it to discover that how many times it has to run on its own for example let's come here and let's say I have you know serial number and let's say 0 1 0 2 0 3 something like that you know let me just drag it for something you know and these are the serial number and let's say I have some name like you know some of the name defined you know I'm just for the timing I'm just copying the same name otherwise you know like let me just put it this way some name like student 0 1 student 0 2 something like that let's see how does it go yeah so I have this much right and let's say you know here you have proper name and these 15 are populated so you like this program to run let's say up to this row when next time probably you know you get data only till here you know probably only 10 record has come it should run till here so that time you like the program to discover on its own that how many times it has to run okay and there are two ways of doing that I'll show you both the ways one way is that you know you come here and you continue till the time you encounter a blank that's like you know do until you find a blank or you'll say do while this is populated these are just two opposite syntax of doing that so here you are letting program to discover on its own that how many times it has to run so let me go ahead do that and to do that what I'm going to do I am going to you know write my another program here so let me just say my okay I'll take some portion here and uh, you know like I'll take some portion like let's say row cnt as integer and let me just show you that how I can run it till the time it encounters a blank so I will say row cnt equal to 2 because I'll always like to start with 2 and now let me show you the syntax of do while and then I'll show you syntax of do until also so do while you know and now you know I am looking at this particular seat and this particular row right I know the syntax but for the time being to show you how you do how you get to know the syntax you can use view macro record macro feature and you can do here go here and say just select this okay that will help you to understand how to know how to access that particular area so what I'm going to do here I'm just going to take that syntax so you look at seat data 1 a2 like that so this is how you will do it okay. 
let me show you how I'm going to use that so I'll say you know so do while is not blank right so what it is doing look at so what it is doing look at you know it is going to this range a going to row c and t and row c and t is starting with let's say one so in one it will go it will until it is blank it will keep moving so do while you know it is not blank so do while when it is not blank so you are going what you are saying do while when seeds data 0 1 range a rho c and t value is not blank rho c and t equal to rho c and t dot 1 and let's say let me show you that how you can see how many times it has run it has got so what will it do it will you know just go ahead and keep incrementing till the time it finds a blank right so it will actually give you 515 it will give you how many people are there so let's go ahead run it this program so it has got 17 records why because the 17 records obviously like you know it is actually I should give 17 minus 1 because here it encountered a blank so let me just do it this way that you know I can put it here minus 1 because you look at you know when it actually it was 16 it became 17 it became not equal to it became blank and that's why it did not continue so I have 16 records here that's a simple thing so now coming back to that what do I do if at all you know at times when you are writing big code you can make a mistake for example you can say something like this right row ct and now if you run it probably it will keep running forever okay and in that case how will you solve it right it's just running now it is actually hung you know it will not so essentially you know you will have to probably put control c or something or probably you know it is just hung because you know this program is wrong so what do you do now so look at what what has happened you wrote one syntax by mistake and it got undetected and became an infinite loop why because rho cnt is always one rho ct is not at all defined so how you can sa save yourself from this kind of mistake one way is that you put option explicit option explicit you know is a command which ensures that every time when you run it it will check for the syntax so like right now if you try to define it is running I mean let me just stop it here let me restart my program you know I mean so now look at the moment I have defined option explicit what will happen if I try to run it like this it is saying variable undefined and that's a huge boon because you know that way you know that okay you have committed some mistake and you will correct it before you know running it so in one line option explicit forces your VBA to put explicit name for each and every variable and that's a huge boon essentially if you are writing a big code this whole thing is happening because Excel VBA comes with a feature that it has a, a it has a, a way of defining all undefined variable as variant and that was creating problem that row CNT was getting defined as zero and every time it was just one and that's why it was becoming infinite you saw what has happened it actually created a loop and I had to forcefully kill this Excel now so if essentially what you learned you learned a do while syntax and it continued until it uh, you know till the time it didn't become blank 
there is another syntax which is very similar you know and uh, it's at times you'll probably like to prefer that way so essentially what you are doing and you know do while you know I'll say that you know you'll say do until so until and actually this syntax will work otherwise so until this becomes a blank and that way it will continue so let me just put this in comment and let me show you this will work exactly like that so it will continue until it finds a blank so when you run it it's saying it it's got 16 records and that's okay because you know like you know it has got 16 rows so what you have learned you learned here do while you learned do until and that's both are the same syntax and you learned here by using that you know how you can always ensure that your variable naming is correct now let me show you something more you know at times you like it to run only for five students right and you are not okay with getting this kind of prompt so what you want to do you want to take input from the seat so let's say Say, run it for from rows, and you say here five till rows, and let's say call it ten. Okay, and you want to fill in here, and from here you want to run it, and essentially you know you want something to come here so that you could know that it has run that many times. Let me again you know insert a shape here. And then I'll assign a macro so that I can run it relatively comfortably. So I'm coming here. Just I'll edit it and put the text like second macro. Okay. And I'll assign second macro here. So what you are looking at, now you are looking at that it should run from here to here. So if you look at what you are looking at, you want user input, you know, you want input to come from here and run till here, you know, so essentially programs should take input from this seat. So how you can do it? Let me just show it to you. Now, in lieu of doing this way, what you can do this time, define a for loop. Okay. I'm just putting everything on comment right now, you know. And this time you'll put two integer. So I have putting row C and T. This time you put start row and row. Now let's get let's define so that start row and end row can get the value. And I'll use very much the same syntax. So what I'm going to do here start row equal to this. Now, if you look at this place is actually G3. So I'll take data from G3 and G4. So come here, you define G3. So G3 value will come here in a start row and in row, it will be G4 value. right now you can say that let this program run for that many times so you can say for row c and t you know i'm using row c and t just like that and i'm just redefining it from start row to end row you know i'll put next row c and t and here what I can do, I can do that, you know, go to this range and put some value, you know. So, go, come to range C and just put some value. So, let me just show it to you.
so what it will do it will keep running and it will keep putting that so now if you do from here you know see what is happening so it's saying variable not defined and that just because I had put option explicit and look at why because you know it was supposed to be row CNT and I put run CNT by mistake so it helped me that's okay let me try to debug here it's okay so now if you run it what will happen so it has actually come and put it here I actually wanted in C I think by mistake I had put in G column and that's why it is happening yes I had put in column G I could put in column C okay so it is you know if you run it this time it will come and put in row 5 row 6 row 7 so it has put that way so it is running right now let's say if you run it from 1 to 10 it will put row 1 to 10 you know so that way it is taking input from this sheet and running the program and providing that output that's another way of providing the output let me just do a time check let me explain you these three portion conditional execution ensuring prop you know conditional execution and status bar in the next video because otherwise it will become too big and it won't load so well